I'm Janie Donaldson at the Quilt Central Academy. Are you having a hard time trying to research the long arms and compare apples to apples? Because I can give you four tips that will help you in your shopping. So the first thing you look at is the frames, and that's the part that holds the cloth. There's three kinds, wooden, aluminum, and steel. The wooden ones, they are the budget frame of the industry. They usually only go out about 10 feet. You can buy a two foot extension for one, but it's a little wobbly. So if you are running a computer on one, it's not the best uh, frame to have. Aluminum, that came into our world when the steel got to be kind of pricey but there's combinations of aluminum and steel ones. The aluminum ones are more for the homemaker. They have to have access usually to both ends in order to level the bars as the quilt rollers get full of fabric, where the professional frames are usually the steel ones. Actually, I'd rather even have a used steel frame instead of an aluminum one because I'd rather have all the gizmos that come on the steel frames. Then the steel frames, they make two different kinds of steel. The heavy grade, which is like this frame I'm standing by, and on the heavy ones, they can put hydraulics. I don't know if you can see this, but this frame can raise and lower with just a push of a button. They also make cranks for the ends, which is also a space saver feature because you can push one end of this frame right up to the wall and you can make all your adjustments on the one end with the cranks on. They also have a lift for the top roller so you can get between the layers of batting and get a wrinkle out. So they make life pretty easy on the steel frames. Then the medium gauge steel is less money than the heavy gauge. It does not come with hydraulics on the medium grade ones, but the legs are adjustable because they're sleeved so you could drop the leg down and put the pin through so you'd still be able to adjust the height. So my favorites are the steel, so if you can swing getting steel, that's the best. Then the second thing we're going to talk about is motor speed, and there's two kinds of motors basically out there. Brush style motors, which go 1800 to 2200 stitches per minute, and servo motors, which are magnetic, and they go two, three to 4,000 stitches per minute, so they're much faster. So even though you have a stitch regulator on your machine, you can outrun the machine because the motor can't keep up. You can, when you're testing a machine, make loops so you have a standardized test between all the machines and you're trying to feel for hitches, but you're also looking at the stitch quality, so if you go faster and faster, you want to make sure that the stitches are not getting longer and longer and longer because the motor can't keep up with your speed. If you're just a homemaker and you're just putting around, the slower ones are just fine, but if you're really in business, time is money, so you want to have the faster motor. The third thing you gotta look at is the touch screens. So uh, some screens are not touch screen, but if you could get up with the uh, ones that are touch screen and they look like tablets, they go Wi-Fi. And that's where they really uh, make a leap into the future because <clears throat> the Wi-Fi ones will search for an update. So if there's a new button available, like we just got a dimmer not too long ago on our lights. So if we were working on white fabric, it isn't glaring at us, we can dim it down. And if you're working on black, you can bring it up so that it's real bright because the black fabric will just soak up the light. So the dimmer's nice. Um, they also have uh, so that a tech can log on to the screen and check on run diagnostics and check your settings. So if you have an issue um, from anywhere in the United States, they can log on to that screen and check things and they don't have to send a truck out so you're not waiting for a tech to show up. And it's good for the dealer too because we don't have to send a truck out and then find out it was something simple like thread wound around a wheel or something. So it's really a great feature to have that Wi-Fi on there. They also put a lot of other things on there. Some people, they wanna buy a professional model of machine and they want to rent it out two or three days a month and that'll make their payment then the rest of the month is there so they have things on here to make it easy for renters they have five different profiles that you can set up so if you have the same renter come back and let's say they're a lefty you can change the buttons from righty to lefty and leave that profile memorized in there and then um, they have timers so how long the customer is renting your machine there's never any argument about how long they were actually sewing on that because the timer will just be checked at the end of the session. Um, they have tape measures and all other kinds of things that are built into the screen set, calculators and stuff so you can figure out how many repeats of a rabbit you could have across the quilt. So there's a lot of really cool things on there 
And um, of course, anytime there's anything new, it'll just upload right to it. Um, so the gizmos, you can kind of tell by the screen that's on the machine. Then the warranties is the last thing. You want to have a manufacturer or a factory warranty. If you get a dealer warranty, it's only as good as the dealer is. So if you've got a crummy dealer and they won't service your machine, then you can fall back on the factory if you have a manufacturer warranty. Also, if the warranty seems too good to be true, beware. Some warranties read lifetime warranties, and if you read down in there, it'll say not on wearable parts. So they exclude a lot of the things that they should be warrantied if it says lifetime. But if you look for a warranty that is factory based or manufacturer based, and there are small paragraphs and they say unlimited or they just are very short and sweet, then you'll know that you've probably got a pretty good one. So that's my four tips, frames, motor speed, gizmos, and warranties, and I hope that'll help you to shop and break down all your shopping tips and compare apples to apples.